Alright. We're on. We're on. Welcome We're on. everyone to Mixed Talk, where we discuss <laughs> all things nostalgic and retro, but still very relevant to the world in which we live in today. My name is Johnny Freaking Rico. I want to thank everyone for, for being here. We are welcoming a new year, a new podcast. And we have a new face to our Mixed Talk team. We all would like to introduce Crazy Pac-Man. Hey, guys. How you doing? <laughs> Can you tell us, tell us a little bit about yourself, Crazy Pac-Man? Uh, well, I got to say, um, I am a, um, I guess, everybody, hello. Uh, how's everybody doing? I am Crazy Pac-Man. I am one of many variety streamers on Twitch. Uh, I hail from uh, Southern California. Uh, I love playing Tetris. Uh, I love playing Mario games, Zelda games, and uh, Overwatch 2, and other games that are either retro, current, and maybe just too many to name. Um, other than that, on my spare time, I, I enjoy keeping up with sports, mainly basketball, baseball, and uh, I like to binge watch shows on streaming services, um, mainly on either Disney Plus or Prime Video. And also, I'm I'm also an MCU movie enth uh, enthusiast, and I am a low key pro wrestling fanatic. So that's my little spiel. He's so. everything under the sun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You fit right in, perfect. Oh, well, hey, you. welcome. <laughs> well, we're very happy to have you have you with us, uh, well, Crazy um, Pac-Man. It's an honor to be with you guys. Thank you very much. Absolutely. <laughs> um, the rest of our uh, panel members. Let me introduce Annie Talks. Show. Hello, Annie. everybody. Annie. Hello, everybody. My name is Annie Talk Show. If you're new, aka Annie Talks. Um, I am also a variety streamer. I started out on Twitch Sings, and then actually, no, I keep saying that. I, I say Twitch Sings is what got me on the map, basically. But I did just chatting talk shows and podcasts, which is you know why we're here. Um, and then started uh, streaming on Twitch, and I met all these lovely, wonderful people and have uh, garnered really great friendships with each of them. Um, I have a very active Discord. I also have, I'm, I'm a gamer, I guess, mm, to some respect. Um, to, be sh to, to be fair, the only game I ever really like to play, you guys know, is Valorant. <laughs> Valorant. Um, I love Valorant. I may not be good at it, but I think I'm getting better. Hey. Um, I also play Overwatch, some Fortnite, um, and we've been playing a lot of Switch games lately. Pac-Man and I have been kind of busy on on uh, Switch playing some of the really retro games. Um, uh, Tetris, of course. Uh, mm. Tetris, what else would we play? Donkey Kong? OMG, made me laugh so hard. And um, <laughs> tennis, like legit, you know, you think about Pong. Uh, this is like as retro as you can get for tennis. So we've been playing a lot of that. But oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and then I'm also a uh, YouTube content creator. Um, so I've done everything pretty much under the sun. I have a podcast of other podcasts that I've done as well and very active in on, on Twitch. Um, not as active as I'd like to be, but here I am. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys having me. And thank you for uh, indulging in my creative process. So, yay. <laughs> Thank you, Annie. Always awesome to have you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, our next panelist, DJB, DJB Remix. Tell us hey. about yourself, DJB. Yeah, sure, sure. What's up, everybody? My name is DJB. You can catch me at twitch.tv slash DJB underscore remix. <laughs> I am from the San Francisco Bay Area, a broadcast and XR technician by day. And once upon a <laughs> once up on a blue moon, I will be streaming. <laughs> but I do stream seasonally these days. I'm part of the Fam Bam uh, production team that is in its sixth season coming up now. Fam Bam uh, Six is an OCE this time around and is launching uh, in two weeks. Wow! Yeah, so be sure to actually. I'm sorry. Next week. <laughs> It's already March. March is next week, right? Anyway, um, yeah, be sure to keep an eye out for that. And uh, yeah, happy to be here. Oh, I mean, also just as far as like retro stuff, I've been a gamer since way back the Super Nintendo days, and uh, and and that's that's just it's been it's been part of me ever since. All right. Nice. Yay. <laughs> All right, TJB. 
Our next panelist, Rizaline Riz, Hi. Rizaline B. Hi. How you doing? Hi, I'm good. Hey, Riz. Uh, we're a little discombobulated because this is not yeah. our regular setup. I feel so off. Uh, there's like a bunch of lamps and chairs and things all around us. Um, but I, I don't really stream. I'm just here. I'm just they, here. They just, <laughs> <laughs> they just, they just brought me on. I'm like, sure, I, I speak words. Um, but I, my background is in marketing, and uh, by by nighttime, I scroll endlessly on TikTok. So, if you want me to send you some choice memes. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, I mean, I am a child of the, the 90s and the 2000s, and I like all things pop culture, so nice. I am excited to be here. So so basically, you're retro, nostalgic, and still relevant. To yeah, you. I'm totally relevant. <laughs> <laughs> you fit so right awesome. in. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, my name is Johnny Frickin' Rico. I am a Southern California video game streamer. Not so much streamer lately. I am a content creator. I love technology. More recently, I have begun to get my certification as a mechanic. So I'm taking classes for my certification. But my passion right now is to restore classic Japanese automobilia exotica. That's what I like to call it. Wow, <laughs> that sounds I'm, fancy. Just my back cars? is killing me. I, I've just been doing a head <laughs> gasket job. So um, on a classic 1991 Honda CRX SI. Wow, fancy. Um, so I'm in a lot of pain. You can't tell, but I'm in a lot of pain right now. But it's okay. It's all good. I am a child from the fabulous 1980s. I love most all things retro. I'm also a fan of the horror film genre. And that's me, Johnny Freaking Rico. I'm glad to, to be with you guys. Okay. It's been a while. It has. <laughs> it has been. Yeah, well. I'm I'm so, very thankful for everybody for being here. I know that we took a really big break. Sorry, Johnny, didn't mean to step on your toes. Okay. I know we took a really big break during the holidays, right after TwitchCon. You got those of you know I I got sick twice and flu and and then COVID and then then you know, holidays happen, so this was the perfect time to come back. So here we are today after a very long hiatus. Take it away, Johnny. <laughs> we are back. So today our topic for this episode of Mixed Talk Live is video games then and now. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have an icebreaker question for each of our panelists, and we are going to start. Uh, this is our icebreaker question. What is your most treasured video game or video game experience? We're going to start with... Crazy Pac-Man. Oh, okay. Well, um, all right. Let's see my my most treasured video game. Um, you know there are actually different kinds of tre most treasured video games. It's kind of a, a mixture of like most valuable in terms of price, most played, um, and even both. So I decided, you know, I I would actually say that my most treasured video game in which I used to play a lot, and as of right now, it's really high in value. I'd say it's Marvel vs. Capcom 2 on the PS, uh, PS2. Oh. Um, oh, yeah. I Good used one. to play that like on the arcades, and as soon as I found out, hey, like back in the day, I, I'd go to a local GameStop, and all, all of a sudden I see that game like on the wall, and I'm like, oh, dude, I gotta get it. I, I have to get this. So back then, it was like only like, 40 bucks. I was like, why not? You know, it'll save me a bunch of quarters. So, um, <laughs> quarters. so yes, so I, till this day, I still have the game, but I don't have a PS2 to play it with. So, um, man, it just, it, it just brings me so much memories of playing on the arcades and, you know, it's just nothing better than having to play it at home without, you know, having to spend so much quarters and, uh, deal with people like right next to you who you're trying to really, really wallop, you know, uh, <laughs> It's it's great. I, got I mean, next, it's just bro. I got next, bro. yeah, and and also yeah, and also it's there's just a lot of nostalgia too. You know, it's, uh, playing with my uh, my friends and especially my brother. I, we we used to play a lot of fighting games and oh man, they're like this brother and brother rivalry kind of deal. That's it just brings me a lot uh, brings back a lot of memories. And um, 
yeah, and just not only that I used to play it a lot, not only that it cost a lot, it's just just so much like that I remember you know playing that type of game, and uh, yeah, <laughs> that was a <laughs> lot. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Annie, you, um, same question for you, Annie. Uh, what is your most treasured video game? Oh my God, that's a trick question. Be video game experience. Okay, so as a kid, my brother and I, OMG, we were like, we lived only about two and a half blocks away, maybe three, um, to uh, Alpine Village. If you guys know where that is, Alpine Village is in South Bay, um, LA County. So anyways, um, I used to live there and we used to just every day, every day, whether it be after school or every day during the summer, we would always go to the arcade at the, at, at the Alpine village. And our, the, the game that my brother played the most was asteroids. And, you know, he would always like get stacks of quarters and put them on, you know, he'd line up his quarters up along the panel basically so that he always had next basically. Um, and then my prized game at the time was Centipede, which I absolutely, absolutely loved. Um, so that was then. Now my favorite game, as you guys know, is Valorant. But um, but I'm a noob, honestly, when it comes to gaming, per se. I've only been gaming, honestly, for what, maybe two years-ish? Um, I feel like I'm getting better. Man, I'll tell you, the first time trying to learn the, the keyboard, like learn the AWSD and the back and forth and <laughs> was killer <laughs> and i was like oh my gosh i wanted to throw it out the wall or at out the door but now you, you if you try to give me a joystick which we've experienced you guys last night i could not use the joystick for nothing so it's the yeah it's it's just trying to get used to the pc versus you know joystick and that or joy cons whatever so um, my experience goes back far really really far i'm so much I'm like a dinosaur compared to you guys. So I, I literally feel like my, my experience goes back way, way, way back. So, but my most treasured and memorable moments were spending with my brother at the arcade. Yeah. Well, okay. That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> uh, j just for everyone on stream. So, you know, I am not crazy Pac-Man. He is to my left. Oh. <laughs> Our names got a little combobulated here and mm -hmm. Johnny is not down there. Um, <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'll fix it. Okay. Johnny's right here, but it's okay. Just, just, just letting everyone know. <laughs> it's okay. And uh, yes, I do have dual personalities, guys, so I'm both DJ and Rizzling. <laughs> so, um, Wait, lit. it changed! <laughs> Low key. <laughs> okay okay uh, you guys thanks. it's okay it's we okay. stayed wait a minute we stayed in okay. in in the hall in the waiting room per se for 10 minutes and nobody could tell me then oh my god <laughs> <laughs> it's all good it's all good uh, hey old okay, school uh, playhouse okay sorry. also too i just want to mention um everyone in chat we'd like to hear what you have to say too what is your most treasured video game or video game experience um We'd love to hear what you have to say as well. Yeah. Uh, moving on, uh, DJB Remix, what is your most treasured video game? Yeah. Okay, I think I'll go for the experience answer. Uh, I've talked a lot about my stream already, about my favorite video game of all time, and it always will be, and I have a lot of like deep connections to the game Chrono Trigger on the Super Nintendo. That oh, will yeah. always be my favorite video game of all time. Uh, 1996... Uh, was a great year for video games. Anyway, but um, my most treasured video game experience, I'd have to go with a recent one, honestly. Like, I would say it was on Valorant <laughs> and getting a win in round one on in FamBam 5. Wow. In the last NA tournament. Yeah. And, and, and I, I mean, and I, I, I know that's kind of Kind of sounds a little like uh, selfish or whatever, or like uh, self-promoting. <laughs> like yeah, self-promoting. But what I, re but you know what? Like Valorant is something that I've been streaming more than anything on Twitch these days, and it's it's kind of like been my staple. Um, but it's never been a game that I ever really felt like I was really interested in being competitive in. Or a game that I was ever really interested. Anybody that knows, anybody who plays with me knows, I don't play comp in Valorant. I just mm -hmm. don't. I don't. I don't need a symbol to tell me to define me. You right. know what I mean? <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. So, 
I love that. Anyway. That's a great mentality. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, just the fact that, I, uh, and also Fab Man was a kind of a passion project of mine and a lot of other people involved. So all that coming together and then getting a win round one um, against a really dope team to Uwe Fiasco. Really, really great guys too. It was it was probably one of my favorite experiences on Twitch, um, if not you know, uh, uh, ever in uh, playing video games. So, yeah. nice. I want to give me a positive experience, and I'm gonna I'm gonna take it where I can, where I can get it. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. All right, uh, Rizaline. So, what is your most treasured <laughs> video game or video game experience? It could be you know. I used to play air hockey with my dad, and I thought that was the coolest thing ever. You know what I mean? It's Aww. it's that's a game too. I mean, it's <laughs> mm -hmm. that's true. Um, so I mean, I said that I'm not really much of a gamer, but I have played through a couple of games, and I was trying to like remember, like I like like the the choose your own adventure story kind of stuff. I'm not good at like the pew pew, the pew, pew pews, but I like to like <laughs> like. Press, press try and go, press, like, simple. Um, with that said, I the game that came to mind um, that I enjoyed playing through was um, Six Beyond Two Souls. Is that yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. With um, uh, Elliot, Elliot Page and who else is it? Like, Willem Dafoe or something? Yeah. Like, I just, <laughs> um, and I, I, I mean, and I, and I played this on um, his console. But um, it was it was satisfying to just take the time to like go through the whole story and like get into the character and it was it was like like kind of like a movie like a um it was so that was that was fun and I liked this I thought the story was interesting um so I should I should get back into like taking some time to just. Anyone has recommendations on Valorant? Like Just kidding. If Valorant had a choose your own story, all <laughs> oh, right. Your own story. But, yeah, that I like. I don't have very many experiences with video games, <clears> but that's a that's definitely one of them. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. Love it. So if if <laughs> anyone has any questions, what about um, you? Annie, Annie loves Valorant. She should have a T-shirt that says "Valorant, always Valorant, <laughs> forever Valorant," <laughs> and a matching hat. And <laughs> uh, I need to be sponsored okay. by Valorant. Okay. Or you can just you can just have a shirt that says "Viper Main" with an arrow. There you <laughs> For Viper real, Main. forever. Yeah. Uh, okay, so I'm kind of on the fence, just like uh, Crazy Pac-Man, where there's so many games that are some of my favorites. But what really stands out in my mind uh, growing up from a kid from the 80s is uh, when I met my best friend at the time, we started playing Double Dragon in the arcade. Mm, and, oh, yeah. and the cool thing about the game Double Dragon was, and I always think it's, it's, it's amazing, the way the co-op works. It was the first game where one of the players can grab the bad guy and hold him you know, from behind, and then the other player starts pounding him, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That co-op experience that it, it provided, uh, while there was probably some game set off at co-op, but it was more like you play, now it's your turn to play. You play, now it's your turn to play. This was actually an experience where both of you could tag team and beat up all the bad guys. And I always thought that that experience with it and the, the real co-op type of game was amazing. And I, that one always sticks out in my mind. The, the music, the graphics at the time were phenomenal. Um, Double Dragon in the arcade. Mm -hmm. That's probably my favorite game when I think of gaming experience in the 80s. Very cool. <clears throat> okay, so our topic today is video games then and now. Now, the earliest video game version of Pong was released back in 1972. For the past 50 years, video games have evolved from basic programs offering endless hours of entertainment to coin-op experiences to massive multiplayer online experiences with entire communities. 
And now with virtual reality, the sky really is the limit with the potential that video games can have on our collective state of mind, as well as the massive effect video games have in our pop culture. What are your most treasured experiences with video games? How do you, how do you see the changes in how video games are produced and created? And how has the gaming experiences changed for you over the last 50 years? Okay, so wow. we're going to move on to our panel questions where one of our panelists is going to um, give a question about this topic of video games then and now. And we are going to start with Annie Talk Show. Oh, Annie. hey. Okay, so my question is a twofold question. So think about it long and hard, y'all. My question is um, who introduced you to video games and who is your favorite gamer today? Think about it. Think about it. Um, I can start with mine if you'd like. Um, in, who introduced me to video games was my brother, obviously. Um, and uh, he, he wouldn't let me. He wouldn't let me play Asteroids. And I was so mad at him. I'm like, why? He goes, because you're not good. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God. <laughs> I'm like, how, how am I supposed to get good or get better if you don't let me play? But... He, you know, because he was my only sibling um, and older, of course, you know, the younger, the, you know, the, the, the younger sibling always wants to outdo the older sibling, I guess. Um, I, that was me. I always wanted to, to be the one to beat him. So I knew I couldn't beat him in Asteroids, so I had to beat him in something that I felt like I could play, which to me at the time was Centipede. Um, so we spent a lot of time at the arcade but we also spent, you know, convinced my parents to buy, um, I think it was a Nintendo. Don't ask me which version because I <laughs> cannot tell you. Or we even had the Sega. So we, we had a two, no, no, oh, I'm sorry, Atari. So we went from Atari to Nintendo and then Sega later. But um, so when we brought those consoles home, I was able to play and, you know, get better. So those were joysticks then at the time they were like legit joysticks not the kind of joysticks that you guys see today um and then in terms of who my favorite gamer is today i don't really have one because i don't really watch a lot of gamers um on stream um but i've been watching um i don't know if you guys know it's ryan higa he, he used to be a um youtuber um in fact just just about hours before today's stream i was watching him earlier um, I just like his game style, his gameplay. He's very calm, collected, right? Um, and he just loves Valorant, and that's like his game. So, um, um, and I, I don't necessarily watch him for tips. I just watch him for just, you know, how the ease of the game and how, how it comes to him. And I'm hoping that sometime, sometime soon, I'll be in that same game state. So he's right now currently my favorite person to watch. Okay. Awesome. So who who do you want to answer it next, Annie? <laughs> oh, what? <clears throat> so don't you guys want to answer that question? Yeah, Come on. I do. Uh, let's do. see. I'll tag Team Rizzling. Okay. Okay, the question was, uh, who, <laughs> <laughs> who introduced you? Who introduced you to gaming? Yeah. And then... Um, Who's your favorite gamer? Notable favorite gamer. Ah... So, uh, are you trying? Are you guessing? Okay. Um. So my household, we didn't really grow up with video games. My parents didn't get that stuff for us. Um. But we had a relative, like a grandpa, uncle, who got us a Wii. So that that changed everything for us, and we had that plugged into our TV and had those remotes strapped and ready and mm -hmm. we're doing all the stuff and got all the Wii sports and the just dance um so that was i mean that's that's my those that's my early memory of video games um i mean my brother i think he, he must have had like a booty like pc or laptop or something and he he got like a cd-rom version of like halo or something like he dug out of a bin of like the store there was that uh, and then, and then we had those. We had the like, like the the bootleg. It's from the Philippines, and you plug it in with like the yellow and the white and the red 
plug into the TV. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, it's, it's, it's like a, it's just yeah, RCA. Yeah. But like super basic. Yeah. Pixelated game. <laughs> pixelated. It, it was like, it was like, <laughs> maybe, was maybe, but it was like, maybe it's kind of like on a, like a karaoke machine, but instead of karaoke, it plays the game. Uh, <laughs> no, my it's weird. That is that's my, and then I mean, and then eventually, I got a switch for myself, and and then, and then I I haven't touched my switch ever since. But um, <clears throat> but um, I've been, I've been using your you, switch. You have. <laughs> um, notable gamers. I mean, I mean, you already know the answer to this question. Like, uh, well, I mean, I could, yeah, I mean, I could, I mean, oh. I know, I like, I know a bunch of people on Twitch that stream and game, and everybody's amazing, and I, I love everybody. Who's your number um, one? <laughs> DJ. You. Uh. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Because, I, well, I mean, what comes to mind is, like, those, like, content creator people. And I'm like, I don't know. You like that Daz guy. Daz? Yeah. Daz guy. Yes. Okay, fine. Sure. I can say that. Thank you for giving me an answer. Um, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think I, I mean, he must have been on, like, Vine also. And, like, he's, I do like watching people play, like, horror games. And they get they get scared and I get scared vicariously. But I haven't yeah, his name is Daz Games and he's like a British guy. Um and he like I think his his streams like he like he must have his setup in his closet because behind him is just like like racks of clothes. But yeah, Daz Games. That's true. I do like playing. I mean, yeah, and there's like a lot of there's a lot of people that aren't mainly gamers that have started to stream on Twitch, like especially like in the pandemic. Like a lot of like rest like WG WWE wrestlers like started doing that. Mm. Um so I could go into I could we could go into a list of like wrestlers that have started gaming. But yeah, my answers are kind of fragmented because it's not I'm not a cliche in that way. I'm with you, so <laughs> all good, great. Ta who do you want to tag team, um, oh, Riz? Um, who didn't answer yet? Uh, Johnny. Uh, okay. So I have to say, who introduced me to video games? It's my dad, actually. Oh. My dad was awesome. Okay, my dad. He, um, I think the first video game we ever played as kids, me and my sister. He, he had one of those tank games where you have the little handles for oh, each tank, two of them. Right. And you like hot wire to the TV and you would go around. And I think it was black and white. It was really old. Um, and I remember playing that. We just had a blast with that game. Nice. And that was probably my first introduction to video games was at home. And, you know, my dad was always getting us into computers and stuff like that. So it was... Um, we were always at the the pinnacle of technology and games and gaming mm -hmm. at an early age. Um, as far as who is my favorite gamer today, if we're talking game stream stream gamer, um, it's Doctor Disrespect. Who oh. doesn't love Doctor Disrespect? <laughs> now he oh, got yeah. kicked off of Twitch because Twitch didn't want to pay him or whatever. Yeah. He's very controversial. He's on YouTube, but there's very few streamers that puts as much resources, uh, creativity, it, just in the little cuts, the little cut segments he has where he's driving his fake car. You know, uh, there's nobody that's that entertaining. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's more entertaining to watch what he says and the reactions than it is to watch him play. But he is a really good gamer, though, without a doubt. Nice. So it would be Doctor Disrespect Very on cool. YouTube. He he's he was never ever come, able to come back to Twitch, was he? No. Yeah. He was banned. In fact, if you were let's say you were to do a stream with him, Annie, like yeah. he's gonna join you and you're streaming on Twitch, they will ban you. Oh my god, no way. They don't want him <laughs> anything involved oh, with Twitch at all. Twitch MG. just Yeah. 
salty. Twitch laid down the band hammer. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the band hammer and a half. Yeah. Uh -huh. And it really sucks because he's one of the few streamer, the big streamers that stayed with Twitch. Right, right. You know, when Ninja and some of the others jumped ship right. for that Microsoft, you know, debacle that happened. Okay, moving on. I am going to pick oh. DJB Remix. Oh. Um, who introduced me to gaming is kind of a hard answer because uh, um, uh, I would say the grocery store Rayleigh's introduced me to gaming. <laughs> What? what you know like <laughs> <laughs> what i want <laughs> the grocery store what Rayleigh's? Rayleigh's. Rayleigh's. Yeah. so my my, oh, parent, my, okay. my dad my dad was always hardcore asian dad like my parents didn't want me playing video games when i was younger right mm. and uh um uh, there was just one Christmas where Rayleigh's, if this is when the Super Nintendo had just dropped, you know, it was like 1992, I guess. There was one Christmas uh, that uh, Rayleigh's was doing like a, a, um, a raffle or whatever. You go do, get your groceries there, you'll, you'll win a Super Nintendo. Like some people will win a Super Nintendo if they join the raffle. And mm. so I, wanted, I asked my dad, can we join the raffle? Mm. And, and, you know, I just. Even though, like, as a kid, I didn't know what the odds were or whatever. Like, most people don't win those things. Right. You know? <laughs> mm. But I just, uh, I hoped I would win. And so, um, you know, I, I remember asking my dad every day if, like, uh, if they had, did they release yeah. the, the raffle or whatever. Anyway, so, yeah, my dad told me one, one day, like, oh, yeah, I, I saw it on the paper or whatever. Or I saw it at, at Rayleigh's that they, um, that, no, you didn't win. I was like, oh. You're lying. Huh. No, he wasn't lying. Oh, I, I was waiting I, for. I, I didn't. Win. Oh. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but anyway, huh. like, come that Christmas, because you know, I guess I was so disappointed. My parents got me a Super Nintendo, even though you know they didn't know they don't. They didn't know what video games were. They didn't have video games. So, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that was that was me getting my first video game console. I was I. I rarely got to play any video games at all even until until that so that was how i got introduced Aww. to video games well it got you <laughs> excited about it you know what i mean even though you didn't, didn't yeah. win it's that oh, yeah. there's a chance that's, you know it's like the golden good. ticket from Willy wonka you know <laughs> it's like we were there was a chance yeah. Rizal, you know, everyone has the same chance as me right yeah Rizaline and i were waiting for the the other shooter drop we thought oh you won <laughs> but no <laughs> Darn. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, that's the reason why I wanted that that, that Super Nintendo. I was my dad, okay, my dad and my mom were like, all right, well, right. we'll get him this for Christmas. Didn't they get you, like, the wrong kind of game, though? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, yes, they did. They got me Bible Adventures for the <laughs> regular Nintendo. <laughs> I can't see that before. My parents wanted me to play <laughs> things. <laughs> So they got me Bible Adventures for the regular Nintendo, which didn't even work for the Super Nintendo. So did they return but it? Or... luckily, the Super Nintendo came with Super Mario World. Ah, oh, <laughs> there you go. That's a pack-in. Okay, that's yeah. a pack-in game, <laughs> you know, if there ever to, was one. Right. To quickly add on to that Bible game, I, I believe that's a very valuable game up until this point. Is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's, it's a valuable game. Yeah. If you... um. If I don't know if you have it. <clears throat> if you watch the YouTuber, the Angry Video Game Nerd, he does a whole, yeah. he does a whole episode on Bible games, and it's that game you're talking about, DJ. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, yeah. Yeah. I've heard about I, I, it, and it looks boring. Is it? <laughs> oh, it was. Trust me, it was. It brought back so many memories, though. Like, anyway, uh, and and as uh, as far as like my favorite gamer. AVGN would be up there because he's a I, I, I love his his stuff, but I also would say uh, video game donkey. Uh, oh yeah, uh, donkey is, his, his videos are hilarious. Uh, I, I love oh, his yeah. commentary, uh, and I also think that he makes very good like video uh, video game reviews, like actually intelligent reviews, but also <laughs> super hilarious at the same time. Cool. Yeah, donkey's great. Nice. And okay, awesome. Uh, yeah. Let's uh, Wait. make uh, crazy Pac-Man. <laughs> yeah. Crazy Pac-Man. 
All right. Uh, <laughs> since I got like all this time to think about it. Uh, okay. So who introduced <laughs> me to video games? Um, so first off, um, who introduced me to video games? Actually, to owning one. Uh, my first console, which is the NES. Um, my dad actually got me my what? first NES. But oh. here's the thing: like, I didn't know how to go about the video games at in a very, uh, very young age. So he played it most of the time. <laughs> So, um, what really, really introduced, I mean, I played a little bit of Mario, but like, you know, I didn't, uh, you know, I wasn't really good at it, um, at that time, but, um, but who actually really introduced me to video games with, you know, a, like a vast variety would be my best friends back in the day, uh, Dennis and Brian. Um, they, they played a whole variety of, you know, baseball games. They also played, uh, Mario and, um. Back in the days, oh, fighting games. They they played a lot of Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat. I mean, they in, they introduced me to those kind of games, and I started playing it. I started getting my um, my dexterity into you know into those games, and I just suddenly became like a fan of it. And they were they were the kinds of people who I remember where they used to have the Nintendo Sega Wars. They're those kind of kids who got both the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis. And I was that kind of kid too, so that kind of influenced uh, influenced me into doing that. Oh, and, you spoiled children! <laughs> yeah. So I mean, spoiled consoles. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it kind of introduced me video games to that from that standpoint, and like just a vast variety of what I could play, you know. And yeah, and uh, let's see, my favorite gamer right now. I gotta say, my favorite gamer would be anybody who plays the games I play, but the the, the streamer that kind of sticks out for me uh, as a Twitch streamer named Big Cheese in which who I met at TwitchCon last year uh, just out of the blue because um, he plays Tetris. He plays a, um, he, he's really good at Tetris actually. Probably better than I am. Probably probably better than me. And uh, he plays a lot of Call of Duty and uh, I myself play Call of Duty but not, you know, not for like a long time. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, he was very enjoyable to watch, very entertaining. That was actually the the most um, important part of how, how I follow him and watch him. And not only that he's good at games, but he's very talented. So I don't know if I could give him a shout out. Is that okay? Or yeah, is that sure. Possible? Okay. In so fact, if you guys out. know the the streamers' um, names or um, handles, you can shout those out as well mm-hmm. um, for those of yeah, you guys. Just... Yeah. yeah, just a big shout out to Big Cheese. Uh, make sure you catch him at http forward slash slash twitch tv slash Big Cheese. He even has a. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, just go ahead and check him out. And uh, he's very entertaining. And I hope you guys, you know, just hope, hope you guys do find him entertaining. I do. So, like, very unique uh, streamer. And um, yeah. That should be it. Nice. <laughs> All right. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, moving on to our next panelist question. Uh, from DJB Remix, what is? Uh, do you have a question for our panelists uh, in regards to video games then and now? Uh, so I know we talk a lot about like retro stuff and nostalgic stuff and everything, but as 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 we're all gamers, I also would like to ask like, what's what's a video game that hasn't been made yet, but you would love to play someday, like? Like even if even if the te- maybe the technology isn't there yet, or maybe um, it's just a genre of uh, uh, that that hasn't really been um, put together yet. Uh, you know what I mean? Like a like a like a mashup or something. Like a, like for example, Smash Brothers was a dream game for so many people for so long until finally they they put like Super Smash Brothers together. And then you got to see all these fighting characters fighting in the same game. Um, so, uh, and and while y'all think about that, I, I think I'll go first. And I, I probably have two answers to this. One, I'm a huge Final Fantasy fan. Final Fantasy is like one of my lifelong like video game uh, a series that I'll always be a fan of. Um, and I've played more, probably like... Out of all of them, probably a good like twelve or thirteen of them. But um, uh, I and I'm also a huge Dynasty Warriors fan, which is like a mashup, like a, a 
slasher beat em up type game, arcade beat em up. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like that version of Dynasty Warriors was mixed not too long ago with like a Zelda. So they made like Hyrule Warriors. And so, and oh. so, you know, uh, the, the gameplay was like that. And they, they've also done that with other games too. It's called a Musou type game. So I would love to see a Final Fantasy Musou type game. That's like that's my nerd answer. <laughs> and then my other answer really is just in the future. Like I want to I want to be in virtual reality and forget that I'm in virtual reality. You know, I want to put on a headset and I want to be able to smell like the environment. Mm -hmm. You know. Wow. Nice. Uh, I want I want to be able to. Uh, <laughs> I want to be able to. Um, uh, I I don't know feel sensations like if somebody pokes me in the back i'll feel a poke in the back yeah. <laughs> Whoa, <Yeah. laughs> augmented reality I'm, right i'm i'm sensing he wants something that's kind of like a, a sword art online oh uh, sure yeah yeah that's mm -hmm. nice. i've only seen one episode of that anime but but yeah i'll take your word for it pack mm -hmm. <laughs> it's very crucial that's a crucial <laughs> anime so oh yeah all right, so uh, Pac-Man, would you like to go next? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't want to take your. Oh no, we're good. Um, so basically, the question is, um, what would be a really good smash uh mashup, right? For uh, from retro. I posted it in the chat too, so if it's kind of paraphrased, but question two, it's like. Okay. Yeah, thank you, you know, Annie, for putting. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I think <laughs> now that I kind of think about it i kind of had to think about this like a little bit but um i'm just trying to go back to like retro gaming like you know all the way you know again we mentioned earlier pong <laughs> i we do know i i do remember when you're playing pong you're just going up and down and stuff yeah. i kind of want to see if if there's gonna be a version of pong where you add depth to it so like instead of just going left and right how about you go up and down oh so you want to see they more 3d that, they have that so no, they have that um, in virtual reality. They have a version where you block, almost like being a goalie, you know, in soccer. Mm -hmm. oh. And then the Nintendo Entertainment mm -hmm. System had the Power Glove version of that piece of crap game. <laughs> piece oh, wow. of crap. <laughs> it was because the Power Glove never worked. Oh, you know what I mean? right, it's right. Oh yeah. Two hundred fifty dollar yeah. piece of crap, basically. It I mean, it, 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 I remember it just looks great at the you know those retro. Looks shows, awesome. So, like, I mean, but. Yeah, it's something you wouldn't want to wear as like a you know something you wear on Halloween, but uh, <laughs> but anyway, like um yeah, I just maybe something a little more of anything retro. I think back in the day, I kind of want to see if what the game would look like if you add depth to it. Like you know, if there's like an up and down to something, and um, yeah, uh, I hmm. even like uh, what do you call that? Uh, I mean, there's this game called Alleyway. It's kind of the same thing as Arkanoid or Arkanoid, where you have this like little spaceship where you just keep hitting the ball and you keep hitting blocks. You know, the ball will hit the blocks and it'll just come back to you and you keep hitting it again and again. Like, I wonder it'll be like, I hope maybe down the line there might be like a game where you add depth to it and then just makes it, it makes it kind of challenging rather than having to go left and right. Then, oh, you gotta have to go down and <laughs> up again. And there's just so many angles you go at. And um, I thought. That would be kind of fun if you know if that kind of game were ever to develop. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. Good. Yay. Good one. All right. Okay. Who, who, Pick someone. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'd say uh, Annie. Oh, my God. I don't. Actually, the, the, as I'm sitting here, I had, like, no idea. Like, I don't see right. anything. Your dream game, Annie. Your dream <laughs> game. Okay, well, like, all the games exist uh, uh, like now. a I VR know. game where you eat chips. You know, <laughs> uh, <no>. it probably <laughs> exists already. I'm just joking. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know per se that I have a game that I want to see in the future, but I mean, I'll take a stretch right now. I I would I wouldn't want to see, and I don't know what I want to see in the near future, but I do want to see. I want I do want to hear me. Sorry, my voice as a voice actor in one of them. So I'm hoping for one of those. <laughs> so um, I have always dreamt about being a voice actor in one of the 
games per se, but I'm not as animated as I may have to be like one of those little fudgies was where I'm like the, you know, the stern school teacher or something in a, in a storyline, uh-huh. something, but I would love to see, you know, more, um, I don't know, just opportunity for mainstream, mainstream people like myself to be able to have an opportunity to do, you know, voice acting. So I'd like to see more of that. I know, I know that they have voice actors, you know, that are trained that are, that are, that do this kind of thing. That's their profession. But I'd like to be able to, you know, have an opportunity, any one of us to have an opportunity to do voice acting um, in any of these video games. So that's kind of what I would like to see in the future. <laughs> have you tried to do like, is it a dub? Like, uh, yeah, or you, I mean, like, I, I do that. I've, I've done like voice acting for commercials, like voice, or okay. like little tiny small ads in the past yeah. but i've not done an actual video game but i imagine now remember you guys we we had laura faye smith on our podcast not too long ago and she's mm-hmm. the voice of genshin who is she uh genshin impact she Noel. was no i can't remember Noel. oh my gosh some and uh, rosalina rosalina there you go from, rosalina uh, the super mario uh series Right. And when, when we spoke to her and I asked her about the, her experience and, you know, she loves the experience and whatnot. But she did say that a lot of what she does is just a lot of, you know, reactions like, Ooh, ah, you know, a lot of those, you know, I don't I'm thinking. Hmm. So I want some, something a little bit more intelligent or intelligible, I guess. But um, I don't know, just I, I've not done that per se, but I've done other things, you know, along the vo- the, of the line of voice acting. But um, th- I think that would be something interesting to, to see in the future. I don't know. Just putting it out there. Y'all gamers, gaming companies out there. Hello. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. All right. I tag team. Johnny. Um, for me, okay. I just wish they would come out with a triple A title, awesome version of Halloween with Michael Myers. <laughs> you that's and your all word. I want. There you is a really good um, independent game that some programmers made for, uh, called Pig Farmer. Uh, it's just called Halloween or P- Pig Farmer's Halloween. It's done really well, but this is people using their own money, no budget, no actual, you know, company behind them, and they did an incredible job with it. Uh, but yeah, what the heck? Come out with a triple A title, Halloween mo- a game, you know? Oh, that Halloween would be interesting. Game. Yeah, they did. They you did it know? with Friday the Thirteenth. They did a really good job with it. Uh, by the way, I know there was a lawsuit, so they couldn't update the game for a while because trying to get who has the rights—is it the director or is it the producer? It was in uh, it was in um, the courts for a while, so they couldn't update the game for a while, and it kind of hurt the game. But come on. Halloween, Halloween game. <laughs> yeah, nice. Okay, that's 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 what I want to see. That's what I've been waiting to see. Um, Rizaline. Okay. Um, so all the talk about like intellectual property games, like it does, it does make me wish that there could be more mashups of different intellectual property. But I know that that's hard because of like copyright and like I mean Disney owns this and Fox owns this or Sony owns but like it would be and then okay because I I like like I like like true crime television shows mm. so like it would be yeah. so cool to like have like Criminal Minds and like Law and Order like if I can't have it in a TV show like put it into like a video game and like. Mm-hmm. But then, just a really good Criminal Minds uh, video game nice. would be dope. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but like, but is it? Would it be cost effective? Like, because they don't have to bring in the actors to do all the stuff. Like, they just have to animate them and like. So I I like, I would be curious if if it would make sense. In like a in just a dream and imagining standpoint. But what would make it good is if they brought the actors in though. Cause then yeah. they would get mm-hmm. mocap and That's the facial, mm-hmm. you know, like exp- like uh, their act their performances. True. That's what made The Last of Us so good. It's because mm-hmm. they got mocap actors. That's true. Yeah. But I mean but other than that, I mean what come, what also came to mind is like in Star Trek when they have like the 
the hollow deck. <laughs> it just it's just like like the ultimate immersive VR without the head, you know, you just if there was a hollow deck, like you just go into a room and then and then all of space and matter can just be anything. But then the whole time you're just in this room. Mm. It's kind of trippy. <laughs> but yeah, that would be cool. But also kind of scary. That would be cool. <laughs> I, on top of that, I just want to say a solid Star Trek game. Ah. Mm-hmm. Well, they have one bridge, bridge crew djb it's called uh, star trek bridge crew for vr but you can play it without vr and you can play co-op with other people one in vr without vr whatever you want it's freaking awesome it is it really okay. is do you not like it that much <clears throat> I, I mean i have some I, videos I, I on streaming it. it it's pretty neat really I'll, maybe you and I should have to get some time playing it, Johnny. But 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 I, but I will say though that I know that that's just a kind of a limited scope, in my opinion. Like a Star Trek game needs to be as big as like Mass Effect, like that kind of scale yeah. of a game. Like this is more like, um, well, I put it to you this way: your first mission, and it's all random, so you could have a real easy mission or a real hard mission. You can choose if you want it randomized or, you know, sequential. But your first mission is the Kobayashi Maru, just to put it in, in perspective. Uh-huh. Yeah. I said it would be a one heck of a game, especially when you are uh, when you have Criminal Minds, like you said, and then you add the Mass Effect um, uh, mechanism yeah. into the game where, like, any 